Friends, welcome back. This is Wesley with Duff Finance. I've got an interesting uh, situation to look at with you guys. Um, let's just get right into it. <clears throat> so, I was browsing Reddit, like I usually do, and we've got somebody asking for uh, some advice. It says, hello, I'm looking to lease a Toyota. Love Toyotas. I'm a big Toyota guy. I'm self-employed and I earn around $88,000 a year. My rent cost me $1,300 and I have paid it consistently for three years. My credit score is 710. My credit card limit is $19,000 and my line of credit has a limit of $5,000. I do not have a previous auto loan or any other loans and the car I'm looking to lease is $70,000. I can put down twelve dollars to $13,000 as a down payment and I understand uh, putting down money for a lease is frowned upon, but I don't think I have any chance of getting approved without it, and I'm looking to buy it outright once the lease ends. The car right now uh, is advertised with an interest rate of 7.4% if leasing. Do I have a good chance of getting approved? I'm in Canada, by the way. Also, is a lease easier to get approved than financing? So, uh, as per the usual, I'll give you guys a second to digest that, and then we'll talk about it. Be sure to stay hydrated. This is coffee, so it doesn't count. Okay. Um, so, a, a couple things to unpack here. This is the reason why people are broke all the time. Um, I say that because... This person's in Canada, so I guess they don't fall into the statistic. But in America, the overwhelming majority of people cannot afford an emergency. They cannot afford, like, they don't have any retirement savings. Um, it, just financial literacy in general is really poor. Um, this scenario is kind of silly. Um, I don't know what Toyota is seventy thousand um, dollars truthfully most toyotas so just as an example like like i said i like toyotas i don't currently drive one but i plan on getting one when i when it's time to get a new car um most toyotas like a fully loaded rav4 is about thirty eight thousand dollars new like brand new 2023 um so i'm i'm just curious as to what car this person's trying to get car leasing in and of itself is a questionable I don't know it there I, I think there are times whenever it would benefit you um, but most of the time it's probably not best for most people and it tends to be expensive and then you don't get any equity whenever you pay all this money towards you know like you're just paying money into something that you're not going to get it'd be like it's like renting it's like the renting it's, it's quite literally renting a car right so you you know there's an argument for like rent versus mortgage this is like that do i lease a car do i buy a car it's kind of similar except a car depreciates uh, almost instantaneously so that's something to consider um this scenario like i said I, I reiterate the previous point that this is why most people are broke so wanting to buy or lease a seventy thousand dollar car on an eighty thousand dollar salary is it, it's financial it's financially just doesn't make any sense whatsoever um there are some people that would make six figures you know comfortably like two hundred thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollars and wouldn't drive a car that's seventy thousand dollars having said that most people would and that's why most people are broke you have people all the time who make seventy thousand dollars a year that will drive a fifty five thousand dollar truck because they love looking cool whenever they drive you know you love having that really nice brand new truck and it's just never really worth it um it's never really worth the one the financial stress so this person you know this car payment's going to be really expensive i don't know the exact actually we can look it up i don't know the exact um car lease calculator uh oh carvana has one so if the vehicle price is seventy thousand dollars and they're putting twelve thousand down which is again stupid even with a twelve thousand down if you loaned it for the maximum so if you learned it for seventy two thousand to seventy two months that's a thousand dollars a month on a car before your insurance <clears throat> and before gas um that's just not smart. That's that's estimated on a 9% APR, 
which is apparently a little higher than this person is going to get. But the point I'm trying to make here is that this, this type of mentality is typical for most people today. You have to understand that whenever you have X amount of money, I'm not, again, there are some financial folks on YouTube that swear up and down by buying cars in cash. And that's all well and good. Most people do not have the money to do that. So I'm not entirely and vehemently anti-finance. Um, having said that, the problem with having financing available is that people tend to get themselves into a car that is too expensive for them. So in this case, somebody who's making $80,000 a year does not need to buy a $70,000 car. That just seems like a very duh moment, but reiterated again, you cannot afford that, right? So you wouldn't go to the store with $80 and then spend $70 on a steak when you also had other groceries to buy. So why would you do it with a car, right? So you're, you're spending, you're, you're spending an egregious amount of money. Um, we figure $88,000 a year divided by 12. That's before tax and it's in Canada and Canada's taxes are pretty high. I don't know what the exact tax rate is, but even let, let's just assume that this is America and you're getting 20%, 25% taxed, 20%. Um, so you've, you've got $80,000. We'll call it, we'll call it 84 for simplicity, $7,000 before tax per month. And then you lose 1400 of that. So again, being conservative, that's $5,500 take home. Spending a thousand dollars is literally one fifth of your income before, you know, with the insurance, it would end up being about one fifth because you're a little under one fifth with, if it's $5,500, that is a lot of money. So just for reference, the, the general rule, um, is if you've watched any kind of finance, you know, things on YouTube, the general rule is you spend a third of your income on your house, which again is some people would consider that a bit high. It's if it's a mortgage, you're building equity. I get that. That's where you're like max, right? You don't ever have to spend all of that money. So if you're making $10,000 a month, don't feel like you have to spend $3,000 a month on a house. If you're happy with, you know, your $1,500 a month mortgage, that's fine. You don't have to push it. That's your max like allowed towards that. And this person's spending a fifth of their money on a car. <sighs> It's just really bad. Um, there are... it. It's almost hard for me to find the words to adequately portray how typical this is and then also how silly this is. Um, you run into this problem a lot because modern culture is really... Um, there's, there's just a lot of advertising. There's a lot of a tendency to want to be or to have like this nice newest thing and nobody ever tells you or advertises you know being discretionary with your spending being realistic with your spending being realistic with your lifestyle that's just not something that people are good at and this is one of those cases where somebody who's making eighty five thousand dollars a year could probably afford you know especially with a thirteen thousand dollar down payment you could get you could get a brand new $30,000 car and make that payment. No problem. You could probably make this payment. No problem. It's just a matter of why would you want to do that when you are, you would essentially cut your income down by a fifth for something that one is going to depreciate Two, you're not getting equity. in if you lease it and then three, you're missing out on having money available to, invest aggressively and to, you know, like this person probably, it sounds like this person's kind of got their things together. That's great. Um, it, I, one of my biggest points is that you can set yourself behind by years over the course of a few months. And these are the types of decisions that do it. Um, it's just not smart. And like I said, it's super typical for people to overpay for their cars because we love car debt. And then you, again, I'm a big Caleb Hammer fan. I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. Shout out to you guys. They like, these are the types of people that will go in on these shows and they will be, you know, X amount of money in credit card debt. They'll 
they'll be struggling to ends meet, make ends meet. They'll be working two jobs, and then they'll throw in their car note at the end and be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I have a sixty-five thousand dollar car." It's like, what? It, you can't. That that's not compatible with your lifestyle. Um, it's tough. It's super tough. It's it's really not something like I said. I it's not something that people are good at. Just examining, doing some self reflection, and saying like, "What can I afford? What can I actually afford?" Like it's not whether or not they'll give me a loan. It's not whether or not I can make that payment every month and not miss one. It's what can I afford, right? So this person cannot, this person cannot afford to do this. You're taking $13,000. You're taking the price of a decent used car, putting it towards a lease, and then also paying another $1,000 a month. That's just an, an a hopelessly large sum of money on something that's going to immediately depreciate. You're going to have to overpay for it if you decide to buy it after the lease. It's just all around badness. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know let me know what you guys thought before before you heard me kind of talk about this um, because like I said this is a super common problem that needs to be squashed. Um, it's a big part of the reason why most people are are hopelessly in debt or struggling financially and this is just a bad decision a horrible decision um i think that's about all i have to say about it truthfully um leave a like leave a comment subscribe do all those things i'm sorry if i rambled a little bit thank you guys for um, tuning in we'll catch you next time